as you may have guessed, <coughs> excuse me, as I was saying, as you may have guessed, um, we're going to be talking about the Magi today. And um, before I start, <clears throat> there was this whole series of study questions that were in the material that, uh, that this comes from. And I'd like to start with those because I'd like everybody to think about the fact um, of the scriptures that we read today. Uh, we're certainly not going to cover all of those today. Mostly everything's going to be coming from uh, Matthew. But um, this is a story about the Magi who came from the east. And uh, so I would like us to be thinking in our mind, what are some of the myths that we hear about that story? There's, uh, I can think of some, and I'm sure that you can too. Um, and so, you know, keep those in mind and also think about questions that we might wrestle with living as you're gonna hear later about living between two times. You know, Jesus has come, but he's coming again. But we're under a different government right now. You know, we may be under the government of, of the kingdom of God, but we also are living under the government of man. Um, so, and what other kinds of revealing things that you might see in this story? I'll be bringing up some but I'm sure other, mind, uh, other things might come to mind. So keep those in mind. And um, once again, read Isaiah 60, one through five. And you might try to figure, okay, what connection does that have with this story? I won't read it today, but I, I would suggest that, that y'all go back and read it. We heard it, but, uh, and then also Psalm 72, do you see a correlation there? Uh, when you heard those, uh, heard those readings, I hope they didn't just pass through, uh, pass through the mind, and then we forgot about that. But um, anyway, I, I wanted to um, just, uh, you know, bring that up as a precursor to the actual beginning. What we're going to be discussing mostly is Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. And uh, when I read it, you, um, it'll be the scriptures that were provided are from the New Revised Standard Version. So there's a slight difference of the words, but the meaning is uh, pretty much the, time, uh, the same. Now, I'm sure by this time in our lives, we've all heard the story of the three wise men. I, I say that in quotes because we have no idea. Who came from the east to visit the newborn Jesus. Now, um, of course, as I said before, some of the ways the story is traditionally told are inaccurate. For example, the Bible doesn't say there were three wise men. Uh, it, it doesn't say how many at all. It does mention three gifts. And so that's where the number three has come up. Now, you might also notice that um, they didn't go to a stable. They did not arrive on the night that Jesus was born. That's when they saw the star. They had, to, they had to travel quite a ways. And so where they visited Jesus was in a house. Um, that's what the Bible says. So they probably met, never met any of those shepherds. Or the little drummer boy, but he never existed at all. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I'm kids, I'm, you know. Um, now, the Bible also doesn't tell us anything about these folks, these men, uh, other than the fact that they were wise and came from the East. Now, there's a lot of speculation as to who they were. Uh, some speculate they were astronomers or astrologers because of the uh, association with the star. Um, others say that they were kings. The Bible actually doesn't say they were kings, but you might infer that from some of the other readings that we had today about the prophecies. But those aren't really the important details of the story. Because the story in Matthew is not really about the Magi themselves or their identity. The story is about Jesus and his identity. Now, Matthew's story of the Magi is traditionally uh, told today. 
the first Sunday of the season of Epiphany. Now, not having been grown up in a traditional type of a church atmosphere, uh, I'm learning a lot about the traditional church calendar because uh, these things were never done when I was going to school, uh, when I was going to church as a small child. And of course, when I got older, I never went to church at all. So uh, it was a new experience for me to uh, come to actually being a Christian. Um, anyway, in the annual worship calendar, which is presented in the Revised Common Lectionary, Epiphany is both a day which is January 6th each year. So we're on, we happen to be right on the calendar with that. And it's a season. Uh, the season begins January 6th, and uh, that's following the 12 days of Christmas, which is another, uh, I, I kind of wonder where that came from. But anyway, uh, and it continues the first Sunday in Lent. Um, so that's the Epiphany season. You might say, okay, what is, what is an Epiphany? Epiphany. Yeah, if I can say it, I can tell you. <laughs> um, well, let's take a look at that. Uh, the word epif uh, epiphany means revelation or manifestation. Uh, sort of like we have revelation, then we have apocalypse, which means revelation. But uh, it's you know become synonymous with terrible things happening. But it really was the revelation of what's happening, what's going to happen. Uh, Matthew's account of the Magi's visit to Jesus is about the manifestation of Jesus to the Gentile world. You know, a lot of times I think we t look at the book of Acts and uh, the vision of the sheets and, and the unclean animals as the beginning of God's mission to Gentiles. But that's not true, because they were not; those people were not Jews. These uh, kings or wise men. And so, one of the questions that would come to my mind is, how did they know there was a king? That's not answered in this story, but that's that's one of those things you might want to consider thinking. Okay, how did God did did He send them a dream? Um, how did they know to go look? Uh, so, in this story, and other stories in the Gospels, read during the season of Epiphany, we're reminded of a great truth concerning Jesus' true identity. And we're also reminded of who we are in Christ. And that although the Jews were chosen as God's nation, he really never intended to withhold salvation from the rest of the world. So it's appropriate that the first story for Epiphany would be the story of the Magi. And it takes place traditionally at night. Because what has been hidden from our sight is now coming to light. Isn't that interesting? They followed a great light. They followed a star. So the story starts in Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Note that this event takes place in the time of King Herod. And it, it took place after Jesus had come. So the people were still under the rule of Rome and Herod, but the new order had begun with the birth of Jesus. And as we were talking about early, that's one of the things that we should think about. The stories of our own lives also fall under that same tension, kind of overlapping times. You know, we live in this present evil time. That's what it's called, this present evil time. And we all live under our own Herods. We've got uh, our, our government. Uh, and at the same time, we live in the time after Jesus has come. And he has inaugurated his kingdom. He's inaugurated the kingdom of God. So this living between the times 
does present a tension that uh, we experience as we follow Jesus in this present age because there are so many other poles and there are other rulers over us as far as legally and as far as governments and our society as well. So it's not surprising that we find ourselves, like those wise men, with a lot of questions. <coughs> the question being asked by the Magi uh, focus on the where and when of Jesus. Well, now, we have a historical record to answer that question. So our questions typically concern how and why. We have a different question. We can look back at history and see when and where. But um, as far as how and why, those are the questions that we, in our modern times, as we look back at these stories, need to be meditating on and thinking. That apparent simultaneous reign of two kings in the same region doesn't always give clear answers. But answering the question as to which of these kings is worthy of our worship will ultimately be found in the who question. Who is the one the wise men came to see? So Matthew gives us a little bit of foreshadowing in Herod's response after hearing of Jesus' birth. It goes on, when King Herod heard this, he was frightened or disturbed in the NIV, and all Jerusalem came with him, or uh, all Jerusalem with him. So they were not, this was not a secret visit. When the wise men came to Herod, a whole bunch of people knew about this, and they say all Jerusalem was disturbed at the same time. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. So Herod, out of fear, gathers the chief priests and scribes to find a way to get rid of the upstart king. The kings of the world love to protect their power and their control. And they're usually afraid of rising stars. In some countries, they have dictators that still do the same things that uh, uh, the people back then, Herod was a great one for getting rid of political rivals by uh, just getting them, by killing them. That's what he wanted to do. So uh, it's an evil alignment. And it develops again later when the chief priests and scribes conspired to kill Jesus. So, the, what they told him was, they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of, Judea, of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for, you, for sh from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Well, Herod, you know, he had false humility, which he was hiding behind, and he calculates how to get rid of the newborn king. And in doing so, he inadvertently provides the Magi a hearing of the Jewish scriptures. Now, what's significant about that? Well, have you ever heard the expression, all roads lead to Jesus? You've heard people say that, right? But they didn't find Jesus, these Gentile uh, travelers, didn't find Jesus until after hearing the words written by the prophet. It's after hearing that that they find the answer to Jesus' location. If that were not the case, why didn't they just follow the star directly to Jesus' house? Okay? So the star didn't take them right there. The star took them to where they could hear the scripture. So truth comes from hearing the word of the Lord. God will walk down any road that we're on, and he'll get our attention. He can do that. <laughs> oh, yes, he can. 
And he can do it using things like astrology or mythology or science or nature or whatever you're into, but uh, he has a way of turning things around. I once studied books on the occult. I don't know, I've told you guys that before. And it, but God got my attention that, you know, if these things exist, then there must be a God too. And so that got me to finding out that uh, I was way on the wrong road <laughs> and that um, the, word of the, the word of God is what brings us to the truth. So that understanding brings us to an epiphany. Got the word there from our story is that God calls everyone to himself. He did not choose the Jews to exclude the rest of the nations. He chose them as a way to include the whole world. So, going on in Matthew, when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Now, you notice after they left Jerusalem, now the star led them directly there it's after they'd heard the word of the Lord. And the appearance of the Magi signals that all are welcome in Jesus' kingdom. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the star they followed stopped and they were overwhelmed with joy. In our search for Jesus, sooner or later, the signs that point to him are replaced with the joy that he is near. Joy becomes our new guide, leading us to enter the home where we see Jesus. Story goes on. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When the Magi enter the house, they not only see Jesus, but they see him with Mary, his mother doesn't mention, uh, mention Joseph, but obviously Joseph was there because after they left, you know, the, the angel warned Joseph to get everybody up and head for Egypt because um, to, to also uh, fulfilled a prophecy that the Savior would come out of Egypt. So uh, Jesus did live in Egypt for a while, and then he came back, but that's not part of this story. But uh, they saw it with Mary, his mother, and which is another epiphany, is that God is a God of relationships. He doesn't, Jesus didn't just drop out of the sky like uh, Thor or some alien invader or something. He came to us in a relationship where our identity is wrapped up in who we are with him. It's, an, it's a relational context and that's where true worship takes place. Doesn't matter the conditions inside the home. It doesn't matter the conditions possibly of the place where we meet. Worship takes place alongside brothers and sisters who come to pay homage, sharing all they have with Jesus. And finally, after having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Matthew's story ends with the Magi warned in a dream not to return to Herod. Instead, they head directly to their home country. Up to this point, they've done everything Herod told them to do. But after meeting Jesus, they now follow a new king. And this king is ushering in a new kingdom. Matthew tells us they left for their own country by another road. So the question they didn't ask has been answered. Who is this new king? Well, he's king of kings and lord of lords. The Lord God himself, who has humbled himself so as to exalt us in relationship with him. We exalt your name, we say. Like the wise men, this revelation or epiphany will bring forth repentance. 
we turn our ears to the rulers of this age, our, uh, we turn our ears from the rulers of this age and set our sights on following Jesus. Home is now found on a different road. Amen?